Nigel, I'm going to start with you. You brought your party and you brought this country to a place where Brexit became possible. Do you still believe that that Brexit that you envisioned will go ahead? Well, Brexit will go ahead. I'm pretty certain of that. I mean, after all, 85% of people voted for pro-Brexit parties. One of the reasons Corbyn managed to hoover up those UKIP votes, he made it clear in the manifesto that Labour supports Brexit. Having said that, do I think now, today, uh, that we're going to get the kind of Brexit that most of the voters thought they were going to get, I think that's imperiled. And I suspect what we're going to see is uh, a government that will struggle uh, to get things through the Commons. And I think we're probably headed towards a Norway-type situation two and a half and that years would be down okay the road. With you. Well, look, Norway is better than where we are now, but it's certainly not where I want to finish up. Is it enough to get you back into UKIP in a meaningful way? Uh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure of the answer to that right at this moment in time. But, but you're I... considering well, taking on the position. I mean, Paul Nuttall said he'd happily swap your LBC radio show for the leadership, and he's gone now, <laughs> so I guess there's a vacancy. <laughs> well, can I just say I'm thinking about it? I'm not, I mean, look, it's not top of my bucket list. For me, getting the referendum, forcing the referendum and helping to win it, I thought I was done with it. I'm going to watch very carefully, but I, I do think now we will see backsliding. Kerry on, Mendoza, did honestly, you hear 85%? Uh, backing for Brexit. I mean, that was Nigel Farage's point that, you know, Labour was backing Brexit and the Conservatives were backing Brexit in that vote. Is that how you read the vote on Thursday night? No. I think Theresa May and people like Nigel Farage worked very hard to make this election about Brexit. And actually, what this election was really about for people was hope versus fear. It was about what kind of country do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a country which is cruel, lacks compassion, um, let us let us get to a situation where nurses are dependent on food banks? Or do we want to be a compassionate country at home and abroad? And that was the message that won the day. It was a message that we would invest in each other, in our NHS, in our education system, in our children, and frankly, so it wasn't about in our Brexit future. All, really. Well, Theresa May framed it about Brexit. I mean, look, let's be honest, it was a wholly unnecessary election because there was nothing in the Commons or Lords that was going to stop her pushing Brexit through. Simon, so, mean, we, we asked last time round, after the Brexit vote, we said that there are a quantity of left-behinds, people that had been ignored and we had to take them seriously. Who do you think are the left-behinds now? When when you see this vote and the way it's gone, who do you feel has been ignored? Well, I think it's not a question of who's been ignored, but what's been ignored. And the, the, what's been ignored is the debate between hard Brexit and soft Brexit. I actually agree with Kerry that um, bread and butter issues, the basic civil decencies of life, became extremely important, and they were rather brilliantly pushed to the foreground by the Labour campaign. But Nigel's not quite... I must say, I, I, first of all, I must say, the headline in the Daily Mail tomorrow, actually, they're going to change the Sun Mail on Sunday to Farage OK with Norway. No, I didn't which say is that. I did not say that. I did oh. not say that. No, no, I you said, said you I said it, Norway I said is, where, okay is where I think it. we're going. No, I'm not okay with it. it. I okay. said it's better than where we are, but okay. it's not what we voted for. Okay. Because, because the positive thing about Brexit was we were voting to be free to engage with the rest of the world. Yep. And you can't do that if you're stuck inside the customs union. Right. If okay. there was a customs union which presumably meant uh, more freedom of movement for people in terms of immigration, then we're, in your terms, back where we started, are we? Or is it well, still a good, good enough reason if, to leave if, the if, EU? If, if we finish up, at the end of this process, with free movement of people and without the ability to cut our own global deals, uh, frankly, we're not, we're, you know, we're not that much further forward. We will have left the European Union in name only. Well, I, I just I want... Is, to be honest, okay. I think this is part of the reason that UKIP were wiped out at this election, actually, is this hope versus fear issue. We've had for years now Nigel Farage walking around like a kind of Poundland Pinochet, promising people that the problems that they have with, you know, the housing crisis, with the crumbling NHS, with, you know, schools literally sending begging letters to parents. You know, Nigel's party, their only answer, their only answer was to scapegoat the most marginalised, vulnerable communities in this country and around the world. And, and actually, that was fundamentally and rejected. Did, did, did the Conservative okay. campaign fail to address that? Was it a nasty well, campaign? Well, I, th I think they were, were really being too binary about this. That's to say there are these very important issues about the, what I call the social decencies of life. Mm. And then there is the issue of with a Britain in terms of a sovereign state. They've come together precisely because actually the Labour Party manifesto do, did make a difference. Jeremy Corbyn said, the Labour Party said, uh, the kind of Brexit to which we're hurtling is not the one which is endorsed by the Labour Party. So, and I'm not saying, so I'm saying that actually those who are worried about 
Theresa May's endless mantra, Brexit is Brexit, are exactly those who worry, what is our fate going to be? What is our social care going to be like? What is our health going to be like? What is the future for us in terms of the issues of our daily life if we simply mechanically move towards a hard well, Brexit? Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn did also make clear that leaving the European Union would mean the ending of freedom of movement. You know, he did say these things. People, this is people before, who voted Labour. Okay. Uh, that's quite true. You know, I, mean, I want to look a little bit this. ahead because uh, there'll be lots of, of uh, reading Keep the room, the tea, tea leaves of what the Labour Party really meant about Brexit in a place where they needed votes. When you look to the future now, do you think we become a soft... I mean, UKIP's share of the vote is now, what, 2%. Well, Does that sound to you like a rejection of nasty Britain or a Britain that well, didn't in, like the language the last of general election, In the last general election, 13% of the country voted for pro Brexit for a pro Brexit party. This time it was 85%. That is the dramatic effect that UKIP's had. And look, the day before the general election was called, three separate opinion polls showed that. Between you don't mind then UKIP the, carrying the, the, on the between, as, as, a, as a part the of the other parties? Between 68 and 70%. Between 68 and 70 percent of the country <laughs> wanted us just to get on with Brexit. Now, as far as UKIP's concerned, no, if we matter. don't get the kind of Brexit that we wanted, they'll be back in business in a very big way. OK. Karen Mendoza, the future of Theresa May now. I mean, this yeah. has been, um, for the young people, a rejection of bad tabloid headlines, yeah. bad sort of anti-media. Uh, What's your take on where Theresa May lies now? Can she Theresa get through Theresa May has to go. She's done. She's done politically. She has no vision for this country that has compelled anybody. You've got a Labour Party that is reinvigorated, and more importantly, a Labour movement which is reinvigorated, which is actually I'm going it's to engaging. The last word. It's engaging the, the young, the old, the gay, the straight, the black, white, and brown, and all of the colours in between. All and the we need kind to of go that way. That you felt uncomfortable with. I think Theresa May will go. And I think in the end, one of the key determinants in this election, and why Labour did so well, is Corbyn looked comfortable in his own skin. Yeah, there was energy absolutely. right from the moment he launched the manifesto. Yeah. I said, wow. This will be and a May had none of that. This will be yeah. presumably a seminal moment in our history, as we thought Brexit <laughs> was. As a historian, Simon, I, <laughs> well, where do you think this will Well, I, you us? know, we, we want someone who actually does embody a sense of the national interest. It comes out of Theresa's May, Theresa May's mouth as a robotic mantra. Yeah. You cannot possibly have someone as incompetent, spectacularly, you know, incompetent as Theresa May has proved herself going forward to the negotiations for Brexit. You might as well pick someone at random out of the yellow pages. They'd be better than her. Do you think... Uh... <laughs> well, well, and the other problem is... The other is the, 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 she doesn't believe in it. Yeah. You know, how well, can you go into... She doesn't believe in anything, I mean, Nigel. Well, that may be true. That from may be all true. areas of the, sp the spectrum that Theresa May has got to go, mm -hmm. doesn't this just show you how fickle the UK imagination or electorate is? You know, when she went to the polls in April, she thought she was going to come back with a massive mandate. The British electorate, British the electorate God bless it, sussed her out. On the contrary, yeah. she got found out and her managers got found out and politics by machine got found out. She has essentially been out. the invisible PM since she came to office. She's had very little contact with the public. She's been okay. issuing legislation through decree virtually and when the British public got to see her face to face, they didn't like it and they went another way and that's an extraordinary achievement. Time for the Invisible Newsnight, I'm afraid. But thank you all very much indeed. <laughs> that's all we have time for.